everybody. How we're doing? We are live. We got little man, little man in the back, and we are uh, talking about spindles today and what went wrong with this one I'm on our trailer. What's that? I'm You're playing Roblox. <laughs> Sorry. Woo, got a little sneeze. Uh, let's see what's going on here. How you guys doing? It's been a while since I've been live. Yeah. Yeah, it has our case. What's up, Hector? How you doing, brother? Jesse, Jesse, how you guys doing? We're just hanging out. We uh, one more day. One thing broke on the uh, airline, the braided airline that comes through the middle of the spindle. Uh, it got frayed, so now we have to wait for the new part to come in tomorrow. What's up, Michael Gray? What's up, Cody? How you guys doing, Stuart? What's going on? Big Teddy Bear, what's going on? G Dubs, hi, hi, baby girl. Mama's in there. David Dishman, what's going on? Taking one boy today. Yeah, no, we're not going nowhere. Um, I came down here because you guys can probably kind of see it. Uh, let me just go this way. This right here, it's like white piece. I just added that to the steering wheel. I came in the mail and wanted to see if it was going to work. And I haven't started a truck in a while. What's up, Henry G? Missing Saturday Night Live. I know, man, me too. Uh, Michael says hello, Kason. What's up, little man in the back? Hey, that's Casey. That's the middle. What's up, Stan? How you doing, brother? I'm looking at my iPad too because I can see more uh, comments. Car, 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 Carina, Carina, Carina. That's a cool name. What's going on, Jose? What's happening, man? Abbott, Texas. What's up, Guy Lot? Chad? What's going on, guys? But yeah, I'll grab the spin one second. I forgot to. It's sitting on a tire still when we took that picture for this live feed. Matt, what's going on, buddy? Uh, but yeah, the, the damage that was done on this spindle, guys, makes zero sense. Uh, what's up, Fisherman? Oh, Fisherman 12, what's going on, man? You're, you're our uh, Simpson build buddy. You live over here, too. Just hanging out in the truck. Yeah, we're just warming it up. Put on this new, uh, they're like 14 bucks <coughs> on um, eBay. Like M eBay or Amazon. And they're meant for the side. But when I'm driving, my hand's always just sitting here on the top, so I have a little wear mark kind of up there, and this covers it perfectly. Uh, let's see if I can show it to you guys. You'll see it in the video better too, but it, I always ride like this or with my left hand. So now I'll cover it because it had a little fray mark going on right here. And every time I'd move, I, I would hit it. What's up, Robert Pitts? I'll go grab the spindle real quick. You guys can see that thing. Uh. You can see it actually started to burn on the back one. And then the bearing definitely exploded first. And as it was wearing down on the, look at that guys, like the threads are completely gone. They should be like that. So that's the bottom part of the spindle. And actually the spindle was getting chewed up. So we were gonna need a new one probably anyways. And then what, what made us notice that is that the uh, nut wouldn't go back on. We should have noticed that all together, but who looks at the bottom really? So we, all we saw was the threads all the way across the top. And then we started feeling down here and we were like, uh, okay. So that new spindle's already on there. We got it on the thing, but now the airline that goes in the middle, it had a little fray in it, so it was leaking air. So yeah, that's, that's our spindle, guys. Thanks a lot for watching every upload. Appreciate that. Oh my goodness. Wow. All right, we're back in here where it's somewhat quiet. Let's see if I can turn you guys around again. There you go. What's going on in your world though? And then tomorrow, we, if the, as long as that airline comes in, uh, we should have everything. We have everything we need to go. The, the brakes are getting redone. Uh, new chambers, new everything. Matt, Mississippi, is Dave gonna fix it? I don't know, we're trying to figure that out. Hey Guy Diesel actually is looking at a couple of uh, pull-out motors like that have some miles on them but uh might get them going see how much get a tune from hey guy on it um and maybe you'll be able to get keep going still but at least get them home help them a little bit with the christmas holiday um but yeah we appreciate all you guys it's already like a thousand dollars for people donating that's that's awesome casper is sleeping on cash yeah <laughs> yep 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 that's what uh what's up miles how you doing that's what uh first thing cash did it well actually cash like got all of his presents today that was pretty cool turn the idle down on the truck where our oil temps get warm. 
Hi, well, what's going on, Brad? How much has been raised for day? I think it's about a thousand. So thanks so much, guys. Um, that's awesome. And all that's going to go to him. We'll probably, I don't know, we'll stop it or we'll give it to him before Christmas or if he wants to use it towards the motor or whatever he wants to do with it just to help him. As he paid, I think, like $35,000 for that reefer also. Like, he paid a premium for the reefer. The truck, he, I think he had it earlier because he's been in the business for seven years. So he got that before the price went through the roof. But, man, if he needs some help. And... Chad, what's going on? Yeah, Chad, I can't believe how lucky I am that that thing... Um, I'm going to do it in the video tomorrow. I'm going to show some clips of stuff that I saw on Facebook. Just trucking family on our Facebook page. Uh, people tagged me and uh, just some guy in a field was like, hey, is anybody missing their tires? Someone's hub completely came off and the tires just rolled straight off into his field in the snow. And uh, same thing, the nut came off, the bearings probably exploded. And I keep having this conversation with Travis and then uh, Southeast Trail Mart. It's like, hey, uh, like there's no way to tell like this is going to happen or what's going on. And I, I was like, do people replace bearings every year or every two years? Like, not really. You just can check it, like uh, get your, your axle off the ground and see if there's any play in it. But uh, how often do you get your axle off the ground and have that to do that? So, and then it, it, even then, we were just doing this. We should have just done both bearings on that left side. I didn't think bearings went out like this all the time, but I will definitely be getting them done, what, every two or three years, I guess? It's, what, 120 bucks for a set of bearings? Might as well. I don't want my tire flying off on the side of the road. Merry Christmas to you, too, uh, Fisherman. Mike, what's going on, man? <coughs> Merry Christmas. Right now it's 9.30. What's at 9.30, babe? Uh, I love watching videos. Thanks a lot, Lawrence. Lawrence Taylor, you're a great linebacker for the Giants, babe. Better lucky than good. Yeah, but, uh, we got real lucky. We got lucky that didn't come off on 95. Um, and with this axle it's on, it would have went into, I was riding the right lane. Uh, it would have went into the, the hammer lane or any of the other lanes. So, Freddie, Freddie, what's going on, man? Yeah, Jeffrey, it was on my heart, man. I mean, I didn't want to do it, didn't want to leave the house, but I could see what, if I was him sitting in my truck, having my reefer run behind me, it, I got, I didn't get to him about till 10 at night. Um, I'm just like, man, I, I would be so stressed about that load and the insurance claim and anything like that. So we got to take care of it, put more diesel in there and he got it delivered this morning. So, but man, it was crazy. Steve McNeely, what's going on? What up from Northeast Kansas? There you go, man. Thanks a lot, Steve. Uh, appreciate you showing the breakdowns. Yeah, I mean, I, I, anything we can do to... <laughs> that's like stuff that can happen out here. From the engines to the airlines and trucks to anything that would go wrong or different things that would show you something is wrong, like the air the air hissing out of these knobs. It tells you there's a leak back there somewhere. But um, we could have put it all back together today and just capped off that line or, or turned off the whole air system but I want that air system to work it really is a good system uh, even if you have the slightest of a uh, leak or anything one of the tires it'll inflate them all so two cents truck in there you go Richard what's going on man the video you upload your trailer why are they destroying the axles and your wheel bearings I started so cool in my... Dennis yeah um, why are they destroying the axles I don't know man who knows why that, that spindle did that. Like the threads are all gone on the bottom and the threads inside that nut were still perfectly fine. So were they getting worn out with the bearing letting go? But why would it not mess up the threads on the inside of the nut? I don't know. Was that, was that a harder metal than the spindle metal? It makes no sense how that happened. And if, it, if that could happen, then that's, that's scary for all these trucks out here. But I've, and he says it's way more common than you think for a whole hub to let go when the tires come off. I'm like, Phew. If you see anybody's tires wobbling a little bit, yeah, it's probably not out of balance. It's probably the bearing going. So definitely let them know if you see it on the CB. You too, Scratcher Joe. Matt in Mississippi Sweets. Did you find some good barbecue? Yeah. Punta Gorda, what's going on, Scott? Pretty down mid there, man. I hope you guys are all recovering from that those winds from that hurricane. There was a hurricane down there when we took that medical trailer down in Florida where it... Uh, destroyed a bunch of houses and some nice cars too how much is a rebuild engine mark mine cost about thirty two thousand dollars but I did it myself uh, but I also did a lot of stuff that you typically don't have to like um, brand new turbo injectors new radiator all new hoses a lot of miscellaneous stuff that I probably could have saved at least ten grand uh, so it would have been about twenty grand just in parts and uh, I did it myself but if 
you're paying someone else to do it, it's going to be about 30 grand, 35 grand. And then depending on if you need a turbo or need anything else like that, because the turbo is about four grand, um, that kind of stuff. What's up, Carmelo? Reef load. He did get it delivered, Joshua. Yep. All three stops. Wondering, got my email, Blue Kenworth. And so this also got me thinking um, about buying another trailer. They're getting cheap now. If I can get one down to 10 grand in the 2000 teens, like 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, I'll grab one just to have another one because of stuff like this or if heaven forbid a forklift messes up one of the trailers uh, You have a backup and also if you're ever going to build a fleet I think the only way to do it I would do it is like Landstar have five trailers and let people bring their trucks not Provide trucks and trailers because people take a lot better care of stuff if it's theirs, so uh, You guys are talking with each other buy a reefer and no, I'm not buying a reefer <laughs> buying another drive ever 10 grand 10 grand or less uh, big hug, Costa Rica. What's up, Jackson? How you doing, buddy? I haven't seen you in a while. Tucson, Arizona. What's up, Adam? Say hi to uh, Fifth Street for me. I used to live off of, not Speedway, but the next street up. I think, what was the name of that one? First Street? I forget, but I used to live right there. I could walk to Sam, through Sam Hughes to the campus. It was really cool to live there. Planning on riding a bike down, y'all, meeting up somewhere. There you go, Scratcher. Cool, man. Try and come down for, they do a lot of uh, rallies that uh, meet in that park sometimes, so try to find out one of those. Andre, what's going on in 2014? Yeah, we're just out here, guys. That's how, If you rewind at the end of the video, if you catch this later, or if you, you're just chiming in, I, sh I showed the hub um, and the, the threads and how the bearings were burning into it. Like the whole, even if that nut went on, and we would have inspected that, uh, Took off the, the back bearing, it, the, it chewed into the bottom of this of the spindle a little bit. Because you gotta think when it's, when the bearing starts to go, those tires start to lose that outside stability and it starts to slant, and then it starts to wear into the bottom of the. You think it would wear into the top though, because if it's slanting down, because the spindles, I don't know why it wore the bottom of those of those threads, but it did. Buy a reefer. <laughs> oh, I gotta go down here. We are waiting for you guys with beautiful summer. There you go, Costa Rica, man. I want to come. Thanks a lot, Matt, for hitting the like button. Mirza, what's going on from Cali? Appreciate it, man. Let's talk about football. <laughs> now, who's playing tonight? Man, I can't believe Tampa Bay got beat so bad by uh, San Francisco with third string quarterback who was 22 years old. They, I, when I looked at the score for the first time, it was 28 nothing. I was like, whoa. Aloha from Hawaii, what's going on? Uh, Adam, flatbed, man, that's for people that are in great shape and want to tarp, man. I don't know if you've ever, you, you probably do flatbed if you're talking about it, but tarping is no joke, man. That is hard work, hard talent. So uh, I'm a dry band guy out here. Maybe maybe down the road, I don't know. Uh, Stan, that, that cat is not phased by anybody. Lucy will walk right up to it and just like smack it around with, his nose, with her nose, and the cat just looks at her like, whatever, and then keeps walking, so... He's definitely running the show already, little uh, little Casper. Baseball is better. There you go. Oh, Patriots, Cardinals. That's I don't know about that. Cardinals don't really have much. I used to love watching them when they had Fitzgerald, Kurt Warner, and stuff when I lived in Phoenix. But now that their offense just sputters and it's not really fun to watch, they can't really put a whole game together. I don't know. They were good for a second there when they got that new coach, and then and with that that Kyler Murray guy, but it's not doing good now. Jersey, what's up, uh, Bob B? What do you think about a Tesla Semi? I heard it did like a 500 mile trip. I didn't see any footage on it, nothing, but I just saw the, the truck sitting there with the trailer. But um, yeah, I mean, Tesla seems to have the the, the game and technology. Their, their electric cars were the only ones that made sense to people and they're still on the road now. Uh, and they hold the resale value. But some of the stuff like a repairing a, a battery and like a Chevy Spark, I saw a bill that cost more than a car cost. So I don't know with how long those batteries are gonna last, but if they last a good, 10 years, I guess, it'll be worth your money. My Steelers are horrible. Yeah, and your quarterback got a concussion protocol. Cardinals and Rams, okay. Not Patriots, but yeah, because the Rams, no, the Rams played, Baker Mayfield played on Thursday night, I think. He did pretty good. <laughs> I was I was, I was uh, happy for him to actually not have his career go down. He actually did a nice game-winning drive. How is Lucy and dog, Doggy doing? And yeah, Lucy's doing awesome. She's really turned into a whole different dog that's really, uh, Really sociable, so she used to be pretty scared of everybody, but now she's like gets right in your face and wants pets. So she's coming around. 
twice this season. Uh, I still think you're working as an owner for my company would work for you. Yeah, I don't know, man. The loads, like, I was just looking at loads today thinking I was going to get something. They're, they're pretty bad. <laughs> so I like the freedom of it. Uh, maybe a dedicated lane down the road. But for right now, we're going to finish out 2022 and chalk that one up for the books as hopefully it gets better in 23. But we don't know. We don't know what the spring will bring. Need a cab over with a stretch chassis. Heck yeah. Uh, Michael, same old we've been talking about. The, the loads are down. The, the volumes are still... So it seems like there's still loads you can grab, but just the, the rates, man. We have way too many carriers still, or too many warehouses that are full of stuff and they don't, don't need to move stuff. So what another type of trailer I pull? Adam, I would pull reefer if it was like a dedicated land and I lived by a Tyson chicken uh, factory or something like that, but um, I don't have much reefer out here where I'm at. A lot of dry stuff. A lot of, a lot of stuff comes off the train from the port of Char uh, Charleston. And we have our inland port right here in Greer, which is 15, 20 minute drive for me. And so we do a lot of dry van stuff that comes into there and needs to be distributed from there everywhere else. Did David get away home? Oh uh, yeah, he's got his brother-in-law. So he's he'll be fine to get home. Um, but I, I don't know how he's getting home. If his brother-in-law is taking him or water, he's renting a car or he's flying, who knows. But they have to figure out what they're going to do with that truck at Hey Guy. I think I started looking for a, taking a motor out of another truck. That's pretty much all you can do. The whole block is destroyed. Merry Christmas to you too, David Ice. <clears throat> so no cars? Well, no, I won't pull cars, no. Uh, and I'd have to get a, a flat top Pete. It's just a whole different truck for that. And I don't even know what, the, I mean, the cost of those car trailers are pretty, imagine the maintenance on those trailers. Imagine the hubs going out on that when you're pulling a uh, load of extremely expensive cars. Oof. But pulling a load of BMWs and having your hub light on fire, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be fun. Have you guys seen a new... Uh, I don't know if it's real or not. Stan could probably answer this question, but the new uh, X7s, I believe, like their whole sunroof has like a TV that comes down and it's like the whole width of the roof. It's pretty cool. Car hauling. There you go. I'd love to come visit you guys one day. Yeah, maybe. I mean, we're, we're going to be at the Mid-America Truck Show for sure uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, we'll be there in, I think it's March. I don't know what the dates. The end of March, I think. Does that, that was no, uh, they don't know right now two cents everything that they had that they were they were rebuilding it's already sold or they had it they were rebuilding it for somebody so but they are they took an old international pro star they took the whole cab off of it um at a blown cummins and they're gonna take that frame and cut it and use that for testing um so that's gonna be pretty cool so they'll have motors that can drop in there and kind of break them in because that's one of the biggest things is getting the motors broken in and um and tuned so that's what they want to do Someone is asking how much they should have saved for maintenance. Maintenance, man. I don't know the total bill yet, but we did new chambers, new brakes on that trailer. I would say a good ten grand just for maintenance, just in case stuff like this happens. Uh, this, one, this one's going to be definitely in the three grand range, maybe four, or because the spindle alone to cut that off and weld a new one on is like fifteen hundred bucks just for that. So you got to figure all the parts, the bearings, new hub, new caps, switch into oil, all the new bearings, new brake chambers. New drums on two back axle on the back axle, new pads or shoes or liners, brake liners, um, all that stuff. So we're gonna have pretty much brand new tandems because uh, our brakes in the front are perfect and our chambers are perfect in the front or are, are new. So yeah, I'd say ten grand. But if you want to be ready for an engine build, twenty, twenty to thirty, which is a lot of money, or have a credit line that's open uh, somewhere. Salisbury, North Carolina. Cats rule my house. There you go. <laughs> Not intimidated by horses yet. This cat is really, I could tell, that's what I was looking for, because our other cat, Boots, was a rescue. We found him in the back seat of our car, in my Mustang in the garage. So um, I heard like a cat meow, and I was like, where is there a cat in this garage? And then I finally found him in the back seat of the car, because he was trying to keep warm. It was cold. I said, okay. So we let him come in the house. He, he uh, kind of like filled out the house, was kind of skimmish. We started feeding him in the house, and then he started using the doggy door, and we'd just come back. So we just gained a cat. <laughs> so, but he's still outdoor cat. He's kind of he comes and gets on my stomach at nighttime, and I'll I'll uh, pet him, and I'll get on T Dubs too. But um, with the kids, he's no. If they start coming, he runs off. <laughs> so I wanted them to have a cat that they could like. Cash is loving this new cat. He's, he's petting him like crazy. You love the cat too, little Casper. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we came over here to warm up this thing, put on this. Uh, if I didn't show you earlier, we put on this uh, cover right here because I started getting a little tear mark right here on the uh, steering wheel from all the, I guess all the driving, I don't know from what, just being old. And I always hold it right here. So it was bothering my hand, <laughs> but they're pretty cool. They're like, 
I don't think I showed you guys earlier, like uh, 15 bucks on a, and they stay right there. It's, it's grips on. They even give you little uh, double-sided like tape things to put on there, but I don't, you can like put that on there and it helps it stick better, but I didn't do that. I think it's just fine the way it is. Cause this actually is a little bit thicker steering wheel than a typical one. So it's, it's stuck on there. Stuck, stuck. Reefer's not hard. The hours are the only downfall. Yeah, just the distribution centers. Our buddy, uh, Nick, Baylocks 18, he, uh, the eight hours most of the time for these distribution centers is hard. It's a hard swallow. And it seems like it's a lot of this LTL stuff. It's a lot of uh, three loads, four loads on one truck going to different places, which definitely pays more, but it's more work and it's more uh, more time for the day. You don't have just an 8 p.m. 8 a.m. drop and you're done looking for another load. You got an 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. and then you're kind of much, pretty much done for that day. Unless you can load that night. Thanks a lot, Steve. Yeah, I, I, I was like, what am I going to do? I was looking for a whole new steering wheel, like 500 bucks. That would just be the exact same thing. Getting it rewrapped would take some work and having it off for a while. And uh, they don't really make the cool ones for the smart wheel because mine has buttons on the wheel. So you can't just put one of those cool chrome ones. So I said, let's just put some white up here <laughs> and a cover. It's working good. Where'd you get that? I got them on eBay. Like... They're, uh, they're meant for the sides, but I just wanted it on the top where my hand goes, and it's actually really comfortable. And it's snug on there, so. eBay, it's like 15 bucks for two of them. They're just, uh, but it was hard to find the white one. I had to scroll through a bunch of them. There's a bunch of blue ones and black ones and like carbon fiber ones. But the white I wanted. And I put the other one on my Dodge Ram, but it doesn't need it, but uh, I said, why not? <laughs> Reefer usually runs nights to deliver early, yeah. Yeah, like that one was a, it was originally 8 a.m. delivery, but now it's a 4 a.m. delivery. Like this early, it's definitely a sleep schedule. You got to get used to that. Yeah, it's pretty thin, uh, like a 16th of an inch. You definitely feel the hump come up. You can see it right here. You can you can feel a little bump. But my hand stays here the whole time, unless I'm turning. But when I was turning, I was feeling that uh, that thing rip, not rip, but like in my hand. I was like, I, don't, I can't stand that. So got rid of it. Uh... Now the steering wheel all together is pretty thick, but you can see how how much bigger it is. Honda Land, Ohio, where we just spent 6K to ship a single container of steering. 280 miles, forget the driver paperwork load. You forgot to give, oh man. <laughs> the other day, the lady at the drive-thru was, uh, I was in a white truck and she's like, oh my God, I love your truck. And I was like, hey, thank you, appreciate it. But she was kind of like, just still checking the truck out and not paying attention. And she never gave me back my card, <laughs> my debit, my credit card. Yeah, and she forgot to almost give me my drink. I was like, hey, can I get the drink? She was just looking at the truck. I was like, that's cool. And then the, luckily the guy, I was stuck at the uh, driveway leaving because there's a bunch of traffic. And he runs out there and hits the window. He's like, hey, man, here's your credit card. I'm like, thanks, man. <laughs> Everything about just dropping hook. Ty, Ty Reek. Yeah, I kind of thought about it, but the rates are so much. They're even worse on that. And there wasn't really that many loads. I changed my truck smarter app to power only. And there wasn't, there's was like four loads. I'm like, ooh. And they weren't going anywhere great. So I don't, I mean, I know that game. You have to also change your insurance a little bit and get a trailer interchange insurance, which isn't hard. But um, yeah, there's just a couple things to do. But they don't pay the same as having your own trailer. I just want to have my own trailer that works and doesn't disintegrate bearings. So if you're buying your own trailer, I'd highly recommend um, getting those bearings checked. And if they look like they're old or been in there forever, change them out. And then change to oil. It seems like a lot of people are oil. I have no idea why this one was uh, grease from, from the factory. I guess that's what they used, but... Um, we're all oil caps now where you can see through the, the lens and it has a, a fill Allen you can uh, loosen out and have a fill entry point. So Yeah Liquid and powdered stuff all over the place. We do a lot. Are oh, you talking about? Um, we don't do reefer anymore because the demand at the inside Spike and span and clean and they load up with another company Yeah, like, so it depends on the product you have in, this, in the reefer also when you uh, get unloaded sometimes you have to really clean that thing out They want no odor which is understandable. So if you're just continuously pulling chicken That's fine. But if you're pulling chicken and another day you're pulling who knows whatever or whatever else would be Refrigerated cheese or something. They don't want those to cross contaminate. So there's a lot of more stuff with reefer than, than people think You too grinder. How you doing JD? What's going on? Trans Am, I haven't got over there in a while. We keep talking about going over, but I'm trying to get the trailer done. And this weekend, we went and just kind of had a family day at the airport, um, the small airport here. But we And then we watched football yesterday and had some good food. And then we had a homemade pizza. It was really good. But yeah, I haven't gone over to the lake house. We got to get back over there. Uh, I have a lot of, lot of leave. We'll go. You're going to be out of school. Uh, I think Monday is your last day. I'm not sure. Next week. Yeah, washouts. Yep. DC's in the house. What's up, Steven? 
Hats off to trying to get home for the boys. That will pay dividends later. Yeah, I'm trying, Steve. That's a lot of me right now. Uh, people wonder why I run the way I do, but it, it has to do with those little people and them wanting to be in my life right now. And we were talking about it. Maybe it's a, it's a big maybe uh, if there's a decent load going to Phoenix to after Christmas, take something like that because they'll be out of school for a while. I think they're out of school till the 4th or something. So maybe we'll do that. I don't know. Well, if we'll even be able to find a load because everything shuts down. If you're new to trucking or think about coming out here, Oh, his last day is Friday. Okay, their last day is Friday. There you go. Friday's your last day, buddy. You only got four days left, man. And you're out of school for like two weeks. Two whole weeks? Uh, big hands. No, we haven't got any word on the uh, truck. What his, uh, what's up, Beast and Logan? How you doing, man? Uh, we haven't got any word on what he's going to do. If he's going to do a whole new drop-in motor, he's going to sell the truck. He's going to get out. Because he was talking about going back with the company that's helping him out deliver it now, his brother-in-law. That's the company he left two and a half years ago. But uh, just blowing a hole in the block like that really... Uh, put him out. I mean, that's, I don't know what I'd do. That's not a seven day in frame. That's finding a whole new motor, disconnecting the transmission, taking that whole motor out and then putting a new one in. So, or a used one. Too bad you couldn't have been doing 3B stuff. Yeah, I know. I mean, I wish I could have. Queensland, Australia, keep those wheels turning, mate. Yep, yep. Phoenix meetup. Yeah, Adam, if we go out to Phoenix, we'll definitely meet you guys out in the uh, Mesa side. It's my brother lives. And the reason we would go out there is to see him. Well, actually, it would depend on where I delivered to, too. If I delivered in uh, Goodyear or over there on the uh, east or the west side of Phoenix or the east side. Or Tucson or Casa Grande, who knows. I wish I'd get back into trucking, but I have to. Uh, many help. I'm sorry, Big Teddy. Uh, my uh, my stepmom, everyone say a prayer for her. She's going through some health issues right now. And that's hard because it's right during the holiday and she's got to be in the hospital for a little bit of time. So it's just it's crazy and stuff like that. I always... Uh, don't know what it is, but uh, something always breaks kind of around the holiday, around Christmas, around December. So last year was the, uh, well, last year was February, it was this truck. The year before, two years before, it was the Volvo. So it's always something. It's, it happens in the wintertime for some reason. Just got out of Phoenix down in Davenport. There you go, man. That's a long run, Speedy. From uh, Phoenix all the way down to, to Florida. I live in Miranda. Yep, there you go. Not Miranda's North Tucson. I know where that's at. Vacation to Phoenix. Don't uh, Don't load out there. Yeah, I don't. I, where would I go? Where would you guys t typically get loaded out? Come all the way back into Texas, Oklahoma, to get a load back to the to the south. I don't know because I yeah I heard that Phoenix is very bad for loads to get out to go in. They're okay. Take care, Robert Pitts. See, see you later, man. Uh, Coos for helping a fellow driver need some more months. Yeah, Joel. It's just I was if it was a dry load or something like that, it wasn't gonna be perishable. But running a reefer and like. He, if he ran out of fuel, I mean, sure, he could probably Uber down to the station and get some diesel and put it in there, but it was a time uh, time constraint issue for him, definitely. So I was I was, I was was around. I mean, it was a, about 190 miles to get to Haggai from my house, so not close. Uh, and so, but I was bobtail. Okay, this thing does fine. I was sipping fuel. It took like a quarter of the tanks to get there and back, so. And that's pulling the trailer down. And back, so I was happy to do it for him, and hopefully he can get on his feet again and get back out of here. Oh, Phoenix has Coca-Cola. There you go. I'm picking up in Louisville, going to Pageland. There you go. Pageland is kind of south of Charlotte, I believe. That's not a bad run. You just come down to 40. I'm glad I re retired. Watch the deal with problems. Keep up. Yeah, Dennis, it's it's crazy, y'all. There's always something. You never have everything just kind of running smooth. Something always pops up with these... They're, they're, they're big machines. They're going to have stuff break on them. So, But I I think a lot of us don't ever think about our trailers like that. Like as a, as much as you think about your motor and your truck and your hubs and your, your tires on your truck, you don't think about the trailers. And a lot of people pull different company trailers. But when it's your own trailer, it's your only one. And uh, I, I think about it a lot more now. I'm going to think about the bearings. And now that I'll have oil in the hubs, I'll, I'll feel a little bit better. I thought grease was the way to go for most of them. But actually, after talking to... Travis and like all the ones he had on the lot there, like 80% of them were oil. So I don't know why they even used the grease, but oil bath seems to be the way to go. Walmart uh, and Pageland. There you go. Suspensions can be swapped from trailers relatively quickly. Opposed to waiting for, uh, yeah, you can just swap the whole tandems, right? <laughs> Get a whole new set in there or a set that's in good condition off another truck. Minnesota, what's going on, Jeff? Uh, worked for Ryder for 25 years. Can count the number of times we had to replace the spindle. 
Yeah, Ryder runs all oil. So, you, Bob, you're saying that you didn't you didn't have many uh, spindles go out, or you did? I see your comment there. Can count the number of times, so you didn't have too many. Replace the spindle. Ryder runs oil lubricated bearings, or you did, Bob? Did you do you had a lot of ones that had to be replaced? Uh, yeah, me too, Chris. You still have air system with oil? Yeah, so Henry, the air system, it's through the middle of the spindle, um, and the oil is actually around the bearings outside the spindle, and then the cap in the middle doesn't have, it's it's sealed, so the oil doesn't get in there to the uh, airline. F.A., what's going on, man? How you doing? Thanks a lot, brother, for the super chat. Uh, reefer game up and running. Get that reefer, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, check out FH channel. He does run a reefer. Him and DIY, man. And so does Velox. They all, they live up there in the Wisconsin, Minnesota area. I believe DIY is in Wisconsin. And uh, they ha it's more of a, it's where you live. It's a market for a reefer. Down here in in uh, good old South Carolina and Greenville, there's not much reefer down here. Steve, the two cents. My wife is t uh, taking it way serious. <laughs> Serbia, what's going on, Mike? Xmas light contest. There you go. We win the neighborhood. There you go. Win the neighborhood uh, Christmas tree contest. That'd be kind of cool. We have to go out and check out some lights around us on our, like our um, our city Facebook page. We don't have a big city we live in. Uh, people will post like, hey, our lights are back up this year. We're doing like a big thing. And they'll post our address so you can go check out the different ones. David says, what's up, Kason? Hello. Hello. I got that sun shining on the screen. Sorry about that. I don't know if I can get that out of there. Oh, oh. Oh, yes. I'll just hold the phone. Let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, Double T, thanks a lot, man. <clears throat> like I said, I was sitting there. I thought about it for like two hours. And I was asking him, hey, can you get appointments? Um, give me the broker information. And um, if you can't get anybody else, let me know. Because I would have had to dr drive 200 miles like I did each way. Just to get to Hey Guy. 190 miles. And when he said, I don't have anybody else, I said, all right, man, I'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> I started headed to the truck and headed that way. <clears throat> Is there propane hauling in your area? Um, probably, old man. I'm not sure. That definitely would have a hazmat, I would think of, too. Live in any but drive for Texas-based company. There you go, Rob. Thanks a lot, Al Alti or Atley. Um, I'm a polisher, so gave you a good idea to check the bearing when the wheels... Uh, I'm a polisher, so you gave me a good idea. Yeah, just any kind of play in that thing. But for me, it's mind-boggling because we checked them and we repacked them all when we just did that other uh, spindle. So is there really any way to tell, like, the casing of the, of the bearing maybe just cracks over time or, or gets worn out or gets heated up and cooled down so many times that that metal gives way? Because though we just checked that that spindle. We just uh, retightened that nut. We put the clip back in where it's supposed to be. Shouldn't have backed off. Um, and that bearing still let go. Once there's any kind of play, that bearing start going to start slapping against the, the nut, and I guess it just pushed it enough where it ripped off all those threads on the bottom, and it actually made it marks on the bottom of the spindle too. So I don't know. Uh, I wish I could have saved that spindle because that's fourteen, fifteen hundred bucks just to do that. But was it? I think it's the bearings. The consensus is just saying that the bearings uh, went out, and that's what it was. I don't know. Twenty five years. Use it always like that. Get help. Not much more. Uh, I missed the other part of that, I think. Do, do, do. And did Bob ever come back? Uh, comment about how he... Uh... What's up, Kuda? How you doing, man? Old man, what's going on? I don't think he commented back on if he did have a lot of bearings that went out or, or hubs or, or spindles. Or if he just, uh, with the oil, he didn't have that many. I don't know. Philip, hope you are too, man. We're doing pretty good. Can't complain. Got food on the table and bills paid and got some, some sand claw stuff uh, ready to go. Who's the GOAT? Luke Holmes and Morgan Wallen. Ah, they're both awesome. We love them both, but Morgan Wallen seems to be on a real big hit streak right now. His tickets, I think, are sold out already for his tour that's coming up next year. I don't say blah, blah, blah. You don't say blah, blah, blah? <laughs> Uh, try to polish your wheels and tanks while you got time. There you go. Where did I learn that? Tell them. Uh, I don't say blah, blah, blah. Your mom always says that. It's from a show? Uh, yeah, I would need a PTO if I did hazmat for the, for the, uh, you don't say blah, blah, blah. Pencilmation? Pencilmation? The other 
Or D Dandalmation? Oh. I don't know. I don't say blah, blah, blah. <laughs> What's it from? <laughs> What's it from? Transil? Transilmation? It's from Transilmation, guys. And he says, I don't say blah, blah, blah. Oh, Hotel, Hotel Transylvania. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's where it's from. Thanks for bringing up Hazmat. You are welcome. Speedy. Waiting. Yeah, I, I'm still waiting on a trailer, guys. This the um, airline that goes through the middle of the spindle was like frayed, and so it was leaking. So, yeah, we're going to have to get a new one. It comes in from the bottom of the airbag where, where the actual axle is. There's a little brass fitting there, and if you take that out, you can pull the whole line out. So now we got to put a new line in, but we have to wait for it to come, which is tomorrow. So we'll have that part in tomorrow, just a simple airline. We could have put it all back together and uh, got away with it, uh, just turned the air system off, but I want that air system working, so we're waiting for that airline. But it's been, this is the longest I've ever been down, so I turned it in last Monday. This truck was Sunday to Monday, uh, so uh, almost a full week, and uh, or over a full week. That and then this trailer will be Monday to Tuesday. So about the same time as it took me to rebuild this whole motor, new turbo and everything, we're going to have our trailer down. But that was partially because we had to get somebody out there to cut off the spindle. And now it's because we're missing a part. So parts and uh, and getting good shops to do do the work. Livestock holler? No thanks, no thanks. And I don't have a lot of that around here where we live. Do it right the first time, yeah. Just replace your bearings is the moral of the story. Uh, if you buy... A, trailer mine's a 2014 so it's been in service for eight years um yeah replacing after five years i would say i don't know i don't know what the interval is for replacing bearings but it's something that you don't think you would have to do you do because you don't want your tires falling off what's up bad boy how you doing man sell some of the used car lot in the yard and work on your rig <laughs> there you go that's time buddy elf come on yeah, Buddy the Elf. Where was Buddy the Elf this morning, uh, Case? Case, Case. What? Where was Buddy the Elf this morning? On the choo-choo. <laughs> he was on the train. He was holding on to the uh, smokestack for the train. <laughs> Angry Egg, what's up, man? <clears throat> How you been, man? I haven't seen you in a while. Hope you, everything's going good. Hope you're having a good Christmas, man. Will you replace trailer after 10 years? No, Mike, I don't think so. Like, that's the thing about... um. These shippers, I've had three of them in four years, almost five years, ask me if my trailer's uh, newer or less than 10 years old. And nobody, they asked you, but nobody like goes out there and checks your trailer. They never like go check your VIN <laughs> and see if it's good. So I don't know if that, uh, you hear that in the, in the industry and that's something definitely want to have a newer um, trailer, but they don't really like uh, come out there and check it. Monster Zero, what's going on, man? How you been? We're doing good. Jessica Jenkins, what's going on? My Dollywood friend. How you guys doing? How you holding up? How's Gus doing? How the girls? Are, you guys are probably getting out of school on Friday too, right? And then I'm praying for you guys with what you guys got going on. I'm, I'm really sending good vibes your way. Tony, what's going on? Look at 16 Mac 700 on power on a Mac power plant. Yeah, I've heard. What is that? The M8, that motor? Asking 35, may get rebuilt in the right way. Uh, 35, what year? It's a 16 Mac. That's not the Anthem. F8 has a Mac. Um, I don't know much about them. I just, my stigma in my head is get a Cummins or get a Detroit motor. So if it has that Mac drivetrain, I would steer away from it. But if you have somebody that works on it and knows those engines, then what's up, Joshua Jeffers? How you doing, buddy? Good hearing from you. Um, yeah, I would uh, definitely make sure you got a good mechanic that works on those motors. If not, I would steer towards a Cummins or a, a Detroit. Tell a guy's fuel caps off. Just hanging. <laughs> I've actually done that before, so I can't can't knock them. I don't know why, but it's always the driver's side. I don't know if I'm hanging it up, but I'm like paying attention to go pay it or something. But I've left it off like twice in four years. Once on a Volvo, and once on this truck, and I get somewhere. And one of the places was like picking up solar panels, and the guy's like, "Hey man, your uh, your caps off." And I'm like, man. <laughs> "Dang it, man!" So. I guess it happens. I guess you forget sometimes. At least you don't pull the pump off the, the whole thing. I've seen people do that. I saw a guy in front of me, one lane over, like, take the whole uh, pump off. Like, the di disconnect thing. I'm like, eee. Just forgot it was in the tank, son. <laughs> uh, uh, tra trailer year only really matters with reefer. I could get that because they don't want an old unit on front and it, it breaking. What's up, Pat Nichols? So, yeah, definitely... Uh, 
two favorites uh, at once, Jessica. Zinner. There you go. <laughs> Jessica's in here, Velox and Justin. Is Velox in here? Where you at, buddy? Good afternoon, Truck Anonymous. How you doing? Bye, Freddy. <laughs> we don't play stuff like that, guys. We're out here to lift each other up and help each other. So, yeah, I appreciate all you guys. We are um, going to be getting a trailer back tomorrow, the Spindle the way it wore out if you if you're checking in later in the day rewind and go to the uh beginning and um you can see how, how it wore out the, it even made some marks on the spindle too so i wonder if road camber is causing part of these issues the bearings uh we just had to i don't know i what i'm thinking is that you're trying a lot of the stress is always on those inside tires when you're backing in or when you're doing your turns so it's always rotating on the that, that side and that's the side that i've had problems with so but all bearings are replaced now. You'll see in tomorrow's video, I got some footage today. Because tomorrow when I get there, it'll all probably be put back together. So I wanted to get a little footage of like the spindle exposed and um, all the brakes and all the, the new bearings that were getting put in. So we get it all, all done. Falls, Minnesota, what's going on? We're doing good. Currently waiting on load to Nogales to Tracy. That, that's not bad. So I know exactly where Tracy is because I went to high school up in that area. And then I know exactly where Nogales is because... In college, we would drive through there and go down to like um, Rocky Point or uh, anywhere we were going. And we would go down to the, we went to the gals like twice just for like spring breakish kind of stuff. Not a, not a great uh, destination, but <laughs> uh, it was, it was a cool place. Uh, most expensive repairs of motor, $32,000. Uh, the last motor on the Volvo was like fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars but that's when parts were a little bit cheaper and i didn't do like new turbo new injectors new radiator i just did a new head and the rebuild kit and then i did it myself so that was like the price of the rebuild kit was like 6500 and the price of the head was like 5200 so and then miscellaneous parts that i needed here and there um so yeah the parts itself the, the heads are like six grand now are we going or not you want to go back home now we're going to cut the live stream short pretty soon all right give me five minutes can i do five minutes and say bye to the people Okay, we'll go back home. We'll go see mom. I think we're making pizza. we're making pot pies today. No pizza. Uh, you want pizza? Okay, well I think mom's making chicken pot pies tonight. Ew, ew, we'll, ew. we'll see. Uh, steer wheels have oil bearings. Yes, yes they do. And the new drone. I actually tested it today. I was flying it when they were coming home from school. I put it up high enough where I could see their bus actually turning on the road, <laughs> and I knew when they were coming. Uh, my spindle got stripped out and snapped the axle in two. What? See, that's what I'm saying. Like, how does that, how does, how do the threads get stripped out? But the nut had all of its threads just perfectly fine. I don't get it. Yeah, Kaysen is my, my wild man. He's got some energy for sure. <laughs> Calm down, boy. Yeah, but we're going to be okay. We'll be rolling again tomorrow. I just want to check in, check in with you guys. Uh, we got the, we got some footage today. Kaysen and I went over there and filmed some stuff. And then um, we'll be back there tomorrow, get the rest of the footage for that and talk. <laughs> talk more about it like we just did in the live stream but actually make a video saying like check your bearings get your bearings replaced every i don't know two three four years i don't know what the interval is going to be but we'll talk to travis about it tomorrow and yes he loves pizza yes he does see you guys later god bless you this a little update and we should be looking for a load um we'll get off are you gonna start here looking for a load again tomorrow all right push the little x up there and say bye 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 push the little x doop Boop. and then push end the one on the right